Hi guys, this is Jam, and today I'm going to talk about Hepatitis A. First of all, I want to begin my presentation with a story cited from an article. So, on Sunday after church, Rich Miller head to a local Kai Kai restaurant in Beaver, Pennsylvania, where he dipped into the salsa that came with the meal. That simple act in 2003 changed his life forever. What Miller didn't know was that the important Mexican green onions in the salsa carry a deadly passenger, hepatitis A. So, what is hepatitis A? What is the symptom? How can it be transmitted? What effects it has on the body? And how can we prevent the disease will be the main themes of my presentation. So you guys usually hear that you can get hepatitis A from selfish, this is only partially true. You can get hepatitis A if that shellfish lives in really contaminated water and you don't cook it properly. So, hepatitis A is an infectious disease. It's also known as infectious jaundice since 1912 because it signifies the fact of the yellow discoloration. You can see here is a patient with hepatitis A and he has yellow skins and yellow eyes. So, hepatitis A virus belongs to the family Picolaviridae, which literally means small RNA virus because Pico means small and RNA means that it's made up of ribonucleic acid genome. Um, another member of the same family is poliovirus, which is spread through the fecal oral route. This is actually the same mechanism with hepatitis A. Infections of all the members in this family pretty much result in a wide variety of symptoms ranging from mild respiratory illness to hand foot mouth disease. Oh, and uh, the genus of hepatitis A is hepatovirus. Um, hepato means liver, so you can tell everything by, just by the name. So the characteristics of hepatitis A virus is that it carries the characteristics of the Piconavirus family, which means it is a small positive strain RNA virus it has a capsid, which is symmetrical and icosahedral. Now, what I find really interesting about hepatitis A virus is that concerning the presence of an envelope, there are two types of viruses. Either they are envelope viruses or non-envelope viruses. Hepatitis A virus typically doesn't have an envelope, but it can hijack the cell membranes of the host cell to get um, a new envelope. And this is the result of the research done by Dr. Lemon of the University of North Carolina. So here's what he said. Hepatitis A virus steals the membrane from the cell and it leaves the cell to protect it from antibodies. It really blurs that classic distinction between these two type of viruses. So that's why hepatitis A virus can increase its virulence factor. Now what is the pathogenesis? There are four steps in the hepatitis A pathogenesis. The first step is entry into the mouth. Second stage is replication in the liver. Third stage is the virus present in blood and feces 10 to 12 days after infections. And finally, virus excretion may continue for up to three weeks after the onset of the symptoms. So what are the symptoms of hepatitis A then? Um, as I said earlier, you can find the John Dean's, um, but that is actually followed by some acute fever, noise, nauseous, and stomach ache. And there's also dark urine after a few days, um, which is understandable because the main target of hepatitis A virus is the liver. And the main function of the liver is to detoxify the blood. And now that function is also affected. Um, this symptom usually lasts for several weeks, although convalescence may sometimes be prolonged. Hepatitis A infection may um, rarely, uh, severe illness may rarely occur when hepatitis A infection complicates the pre-existing liver disease. And it can be dangerous because infants and young children infected with hepatitis A virus do not show symptoms. So they can unintentionally give the disease to everybody else. So here's the graph showing the concentration of hepatitis A virus in body fluid. So you guys can see um, the virus is mostly found in facie, which is about 10 to the 9th viruses per mil, followed by serum, saliva, and nothing in urine. Here's some pictures showing the effects that hepatitis A virus has on the liver. Um, so here's an inflammation, um, poro and periporo inflammation with some ballooning degeneration, lobular inflammation, conflict necrosis, which is basically mean that the self is 
um, destroyed to the point that they have to undergo autolysis and some mark cholestasis um, which is mean that the bile is prevented from flowing from the liver to the um, intestine. Um, hepatitis A virus account for 1.4 million cases annually. It is reported to occur both sporadically and epidemically. Pretty much um, epidemics are really common in undeveloping countries because they have contaminating food or water, but it doesn't mean that there's no cases in developing countries. The example of Rich Miller is um, show that. Now here's the chart showing the incidence and prevalence by region all around the world. So here's in the year of 1990. And the most cases are in Asia, which is not too surprising because Asia has the most people. Uh, there are some cases everywhere else as well. Um, here's a chart showing the top 10 states with the highest hepatitis A rates. Uh, so in 1987 and 1997, um, the top three are Arizona, Alaska, and Oregon. And these changed to DC, Georgia, and Arizona in 2001. So here, Arizona is in the top three states with the highest hepatitis A. And what I find really interesting is somehow DC ranks the first in 2001 concerning hepatitis A cases. So how does hepatitis A can be trans? How can it be transmitted? So some people get infected when they orally ingest the fecal matter of infected individuals. And that usually happens in one of the two ways. Um, typically it happens because of someone coming into contact with an infected person that forgets to wash his or her hand. Or in the case of the shellfish, that's because of people consuming food or water that contaminated because they do not wash um, the food carefully or because the food handler forget to wash their hands. Um, there are some more cases. So 46% of the case is actually unknown, uh, followed by 14% which, which is transmitted from sexual contact or household contact, and men who have sex with men also account for 10% of the disease. So how can we prevent hepatitis A? So the best solution is to see a doctor and get vaccinated. Um, and of course, wash hands really often because, again, we get the disease from consuming a tiny amount of fizzy matter, so this can definitely be prevented. Use caution around infected people because they can unintentionally give us the disease and know when and where to be alert, uh, especially during international travel. Um, clinically, hepatitis A can be diagnosed by a blood test. The presence of IgG antibodies alone are evidence of past infections. Um, the presence of IgM antibodies also confirm recent infection. Um, so I want to end my presentation with the vaccine. So for sure, hepatitis A can be prevented by vaccine. And the antibody can persist from 8 to 5 years among adults and children. And other mechanisms like cellular memory can contribute. And finally, um, the vaccine is pretty safe. There's no severe adverse reaction. The safety in pregnancy is not determined, but its risk is likely low. There may be some common side effects like soreness at injection site, headache, malaise, um, contraindications when there may be a severe adverse reaction to the previous dose of allergy um, to a vaccine component, but there's no special precautions for immunocompromised people. Um, this is Jam on hepatitis A virus, and thank you for watching.